React India. Hello everyone. My name is Ruchi and I'm a senior software engineer at Netflix. And the topic of my talk today would be how Netflix builds software to streamline organizational operations. It's a mouthful, so I will be breaking down my title into smaller terminologies and talk about these individual topics separately. So before I start my presentation, I wanted to lay a little thought out here. Uh, I wanted to start by talking about Netflix and uh, Netflix's success. When we think about Netflix's success, what do we think about? Immediately, we think about Netflix as the streaming product um, that everyone uses or millions of millions of users use today. Uh, the brilliant catalog of content um, like movies and series that anyone in the world can browse through and watch at the comfort of their homes. But we barely think about Netflix as a corporation. We barely think about Netflix as a company with a strength of over 12,000 employees. How were they able to achieve this level of success? How were they able to work so hard? Or how were they able to function at that level through which they're able to delight their users um, and acquire a monopoly uh, in the uh, market? So in my talk today, I want to specifically talk about Netflix as a corporation and talk about our internal processes and workflows and how we were able to achieve that level of productivity through which we are able to delight our customers today. With that aside, let's talk about what is productization. Uh, at first, I wanna uh, talk about what is productization, what is organizational processes, how these combine together so that we can start uh, making a base for our presentation and then talk about specific topics. So productization is nothing but taking any idea or service and converting that into a physical product. Uh, and here by product, I would mean uh, a software, uh, a product that is commercially viable and can be used at an enterprise level. And what is organizational processes? Organizational processes, again, uh, nothing but just a series of activities that any organization perform to achieve certain goals, and objectives that the company is working towards. Certain examples of uh, processes, uh, organization processes could be uh, recruiting, which is very common through different companies, IT operations and support, uh, procurement process. And again, like something which is very specific to Netflix is uh, like aviation support. This is where we uh, fly our cast and crew, our talent, like actors and actresses, you know, uh, production teams and all uh, to different locations. Studio and production support. So it is kind of like IT support, but in terms of uh, specific to studio and production. Um, press and publicity, employee management, and a whole host of different things. And how does productization apply to organizational processes? So now essentially we are combining these two terminologies together. Uh, in terms of productization um, and organizational processes, uh, essentially what we mean is taking those organizational processes we just talked about and converting those into products. So essentially automating those processes from manual interventions to uh, automated workflows. And uh, these workflows, when they are automated and converted into proper products, uh, can be reused across the company. They can also be scaled uh, as the company grows throughout the years. So some of the uh, key takeaways of my talk today would be what is productization that we just talked about. And again, like I wanted to uh, say this now that I will be talking about uh, internal toolings in terms of productized internal processes. So internal tooling is nothing but tools that we build internally within the company for the usage of company itself. Uh, so that company can, uh, you know, uh, work efficiently. And we will talk about this uh, in more details in later slides. Why custom internal tooling is so crucial to any company? How can proper tooling impact a company and a company's performance? How can you leverage this knowledge, uh, take away this knowledge within your own company and uh, see how it impacts and improves your company's performances? and get inspired by some of the examples that I will share today, which are very relevant to Netflix and how Netflix functions. And you can uh, you know, take those examples home and then 
uh, see how they apply to your own organizations. So before we talk about how internal tooling is built and how it is important, let's talk about what is lack of internal tooling mean to a company. Lack of internal tooling can be extremely detrimental to any company, especially, especially to a company which is growing. It leads to inefficiencies uh, ranging from uh, lost in productivity hours uh, by its employees to inconsistent workflows. So essentially workflows which are very prone to errors because of manual uh, and mundane work and thereby losing resources and time, which in turn incurs higher costs because again, you're spending a lot of time fixing those inefficiencies and errors that are introduced by inefficient workflows. Limited scalability because there's only uh, so much you can scale. Dependency on key individuals, again, because processes are not automated, so you are constantly chasing our uh, after key individuals who can unblock you in your day to day work. And cumulatively, this entire thing leads to frustration and burnout and thereby uh, loss in productivity, uh, you know, loss in employee retention as a result, and obviously losing competitive ad advantage over other companies. Let's talk about Netflix prior to internal productization. This is the time when Netflix was solely focused on the streaming product. Uh, it was the time when it was just a few thousand employees in strength. Uh, internal product productization was not our priority because the company scale itself was so small and the company was uh, focusedly working on uh, its streaming product um, and trying to acquire that kind of monopoly it is at today. Um, at the time, uh, teams would build their own tools if need be. And uh, the scale of those tools, again, would be very small and limited to the use of the teams only. Uh, so it was not at a level where uh, you would have standardized products, you know, across the entire company. With the growth of the company, the complexity of the workflows also grew. The company grew from 5,000 to over 12,000 employees in barely five years. And all tools that existed at team levels could not scale up, of course. And the need for automation became inevitable because you're spending so much of time in manual work and uh, trying to constantly improve workflows, which are, uh, uh, you know, extremely error prone because of human interventions and manual, uh, you know, uh, work. So that entire problem led to the formation of the internal enterprise engineering team which is my team uh, our main goal was to own the internal tooling space at netflix and build tools for other employees so tools that can be uh, leveraged to automate workflows and thereby giving productive productive hours back to employees hours that can be used for uh, you know meaningful work which is more important to the company and bringing innovation and work excellence and thereby gaining competitive advantage back. Certain caveats of internal tools is that there is very hard, uh, you know, make, or it's very hard to basically show our impact directly on uh, our financial numbers. It's very hard to show how our the impact on ROI uh, happens through internal tooling or return in, uh, return on investment, essentially. Uh, it is because internal tools are not working towards external customers. It's not letting company gain customers, essentially, of, over the services which it uh, offers. Uh, but it's essentially just so that the internal processes and internal workflows are improved so much that the employees can actually work on things which are important to the company. So how do we measure that? How do we measure the success of our team? One essential, uh, essential criteria through which we measure our success is by hours, productive hours that are given back to the employees. How much productivity we are able to save 
for employees so that they are able to take those hours and work on the uh, main objective of the entire company. So let's see some statistics which are very specific to Netflix. Uh, and these are some of the projects that I will talk about uh, through which we have been able to certain, uh, we have been able to save millions and millions of dollars. So first one uh, is this universal search. You can think about it as a uh, Google search, but only at the scale of the company. Uh, prior to the uh, introduction of this tool, 20% of employee time, which is roughly around 416 hours per employee was lost in searching for information. Uh, when you combine those hours and uh, multiply by the number of employees, it becomes 4.1516 million hours across the global workforce. And that converts to hundreds and millions of dollars in annual savings. Travel and aviation, which is where uh, a lot of manual uh, management and coordination across, uh, you know, different cast and crews, who's flying where, those sort of things uh, was automated. We were able to save, save millions and millions of dollars over here also. Employee support, this is essentially operations and IT support. So around 150K tickets are raised or 150K support tickets are raised every year by employees uh, within the company. And uh, these are uh, other colleagues of ours who provide IT support and they're dealing with, with this scale of tickets every single year. And uh, these are all manual uh, you know, work uh, that the IT support people are doing. Uh, which can easy be, easily be automated because a lot of these queries are very similar and same. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunity through which we can save the company hundreds and millions of dollars uh, by saving those hours per employees. Uh, let's talk about internal tools development process. It's a little bit different from, uh, you know, our general software development processes, which we uh, do towards, uh, you know, uh, the services and uh, the the services that any company offer externally. Uh, so for internal tools, the timelines are very stringent uh, because the requirements are very pressing and they are very immediate. So our short, our timelines are extremely and incredibly short. Our stakeholders are, as a result, very impatient. These are uh, colleagues and peers that we work on a day to day basis. Uh, and uh, the requirement again is so stringent and so urgent that uh, it leads to a lot of, uh, you know, impatience from other stakeholders. Very short SLAs. So, so the pressure to deliver the product is very, very high. Uh, you can see less process oriented development. This is very specific to Netflix. Netflix is very anti you know processes not essentially anti-processes again but very anti-heavy processes uh, netflix's main agenda is to give the employees freedom and responsibility uh, and give the employees a lot of autonomy and uh, not stand in their ways through processes or introduction of heavy processes through which um, it will lead to you know loss in uh, work excellence essentially uh, direct interaction with our stakeholders because these are other colleagues and uh, peers that we work with and uh, we are working towards improving their workflows. So we interact with them directly as opposed to, you know, other companies where uh, your stakeholders are external to the company. You don't have uh, exposure to them. It's like a central team of product managers who uh, interact with them and engineers are layered within uh, those processes. Continuous development, iteration, and deployment. Um, this is, uh, again, very specific to our team because uh, we interact closely with stakeholders. We gain feedback very early on. So it's very easy for us to go back, fix those uh, you know, uh, things or based on the feedbacks that are gathered and uh, you know, immediately deploy. Data is extremely important. We gather hundreds and hundreds of data metrics across each project. We learn from that data derived meaning and go back and use that meaning and uh, fix those things within the tools and you know improve our tools uh, as a result. And our development teams are extremely lean. Um, you can think about one or two employee at max per project. 
So you can think about, uh, you know, how each engineer would be dealing with multiple different projects at any point in time. Uh, it might be just one project that they are actively working on the development of, but uh, you are providing support and maintenance for different tools at the same time. Custom internal tools uh, that were developed at Netflix. These are certain good examples that you can take back uh, and uh, apply in your own organizations. Bots to streamline support and help channels. For IT support and uh, operations, um, it's very easy to introduce bots that can uh, learn from past interactions between support people and employees and see like a trend of questions that arise, learn from that and then uh, you know, further take over the automation of those, uh, you know, similar questions if they come uh, or arise in future. Universal search, uh, search, this is extremely important. Uh, we did not realize the importance of this process where employees are spending so much time and losing so much time in looking for information across the company. Uh, these are information that are embedded within like different documents, different uh, other different informations, and uh, it's very hard to find it. So an introduction of federated centralized search improves that experience vastly. Employee feedback tool, uh, very uh, crucial to Netflix because uh, our culture is heavily reliant on gathering feedback um, and giving feedback to each other uh, as employees. So this tool helps us learn from you know other employees, uh, see where we stand, gain feedback uh, on our own work style, on our own uh, you know existence within the company itself, and uh, thereby improving ourselves as well. As a result, this tool helps us uh, centralize that experience, uh, keep feedbacks for a future, a future, you know, um, future interactions and uh, future, uh, you know, conversations with your manager or other employees, and see how you have improved through them. Uh, talent management tools like job application tracking system, uh, which are used uh, heavily by recruiters. Salary data collection, very specific to Netflix, where we built our own salary data collection tool, uh, so that managers can go see, uh, you know, uh, what the top of market is offered for each employee, uh, you know, roles and responsibilities, and thereby, you know, promising, you know, employees give, you know, that they will get top of market compensation, um, and it is also very le relevant to Netflix. They can search that data. It's obviously done through various different avenues, uh, which are done by recruiters and, you know, data that is collected through other resources. Uh, but it's a tool that's very, very easy uh, to use and, uh, you know, helps with uh, compensation cycles. Travel management and air shuttle that we talked about, employee help and IT documentation tools. So tools that are that document certain support uh, question and, uh, you know, answer to that support question tools that uh, basically give information in a particular format so that you know not every request becomes a ticket for a it support person but it can be self served by employees uh, through which you can look for common questions and information and you know uh, resolve your own issues as a result employee directory tools through which you can search other employees within the company uh, see who works at which organization, how to reach them, their contact information and such. And then consolidated analytics and logging tools and a whole host of different engineering tools as well. At Netflix, we have a lot of developer autonomy. Uh, what, does mean, what this mean is uh, you build and you run your own projects. It's a good slogan to have, uh, which says, uh, each developer own their projects end to end. Uh, they own their own space. They come up with their own decisions. You have a lot of developer, uh, you know, autonomy in terms of what tech stack you want to put, put uh, you know, pick for your projects. How you want to build a certain project. You architect architect your own project. Uh, you build it. You you be your own QA. There's no centralized QA team. Uh, who will take projects from you and then, you know, work on automating a lot of that uh, automation for you. There's nothing like that uh, for us. And you choose your own de uh, deployment strategies. 
uh, there is no centralized DevOps team at Netflix. So each project is owned by the developer. They decide how they want to deploy it, how many servers, what load balances, what deployment strategies, what regions you want to deploy it to. All those things are all decided upon by the developers themselves. There is no, you know, uh, approval, stringent approval, approval processes through which a developer has to go through. It's just like uh, common developers, um, you know, sitting together, deciding upon things and just taking action on those. Lessons learned as an internal tools engineer. For an internal tools engineer, it is very important to have that kind of mindset. Uh, where you can work under pressure. You will be dealing with a lot of, uh, you know, demanding stakeholders and uh, timelines which are short and, uh, you know, the SLAs are extremely small. So it is important that you understand that and you have the ability to work through those. Exceptional communication skills are required because you are dealing with and talking to so many different people is essentially uh, through your own team, cross-functional teams, you're talking to stakeholders directly. You're talking to your consumers directly. Uh, and certain times you're also talking to the leaderships. It gives you a lot of visibility throughout the company itself. Uh, ability to work through, uh, you know, work without stringent processes. This is very pro-Netflix. Um, Netflix is very anti-processes. We do not, uh, you know, enforce strict processes around anything. We give people the autonomy to work. And we the people have a lot of autonomy to take their own decisions. Freedom and responsibility is our number one cultural um, slogan. Audacity to lead. You as internal tools engineer will own your own projects end to end. So you have to be a good leader. You have to have those leadership skills to uh, take ownership of a project and uh, deliver it successfully. Efficient context switching is also very important. Again, context switching can be perceived as very anti-productive uh, because, again, like it leads to a lot of inconsistencies uh, if you are working on different projects and juggling through them at the same time. So, time management is very important. If you want to efficient, uh, you know, efficiently context switch, time management has to be properly enforced. Uh, this is important because as internal tools engineer. Uh, your team will be very lean. You will have very small number of developers. So you as an engineer will be working on different projects at the same time. And what are the rewards? Some of the rewards of internal tools uh, or internal tool engineer can see the impact of their work on other people's lives. How positively you are impacting the workflows uh, through which other employees are going through. How you're saving them multiple hours or how you're saving them hours that they can use to be so productive and deliver something of excellence, use that to bring innovation to the company and help company gain competitive advantage over other companies uh, because of that. You're helping employees uh, with happier experiences and you know thereby leading to a lot of employee retention opportunity to work on multiple domains of problems because as internal tools engineer you will be solving a different array of problems problems which are not the same unlike other teams uh, or other companies you are essentially working on multiple different problems at the same time so it's a great experience to learn from uh, you will be looking at aviation you are looking at it operations then you are looking at procurement recruiting you're learning through so many different domains it gives you a lot of exposure to other uh, you know the style of uh, you know other organization how they function uh, you know so that you can gain that experience and learn from it exposure to a lot of people since you're talking to stakeholders consumers other leaderships other peers uh, it gives it helps you make a lot of connections within your company uh, leadership development. This is again very specific to Netflix. You are owning your project end to end. It's it takes a lot of leadership development to to be at that level and then own your projects and deliver it with success. So, I want to conclude this presentation by laying out a very important thought that internal tools are extremely important to a company's success. 
through in internal tools, you are able to not only help with employee retention and giving them better experiences, but help them save so many productive hours through which they can bring excellence to the company. Uh, so what's the secret of our success? It's the internal applications team. We are the superheroes who work behind the scenes to the success of Netflix. And it's a wrap. Thank you.